podcast is being brought to you by Don Johnson State Farm Insurance. Activate Don in your life and experience the impact. Why? Because Don Johnson is a visionary. She's determined, people focused, a problem solver, and she's generous. Visit DonJohnson.net and DonJohnsonCares.com to learn more about her work with the people and the community. Does Don Johnson do too much? Maybe, but that's just Don. She loves the people and she is a change agent. So make sure you stop by Don Johnson State Farm Insurance located at Rock Hills, Manchester Village off of Dave Loud Boulevard, 572 John Ross Parkway, Suite 106, directly across from TJ Maxx and in between Sweet Frog and the UPS store. And don't forget to tell them, Mr. Dark, I sent you. What it is, great people. The home of motivation. To trust God and live your dreams. All right, what it is, great people. You know who it is. I am Mr. Dark Eye. You tuned in to the Mr. Dark Eye podcast right here on Anchor FM. New Soul Music, the home of motivation. To trust God and live your dreams. I have a special guest in the building. This is someone who has been doing a lot, as you all can see when I'm promoting her and putting her on Facebook. She's been spotlighted on my segment on Praise 100.9 several times. And uh, she's here with me today. We get ready to have an amazing conversation talking about Shaka C is here. How are you doing? <laughs> doing great. Doing great. <laughs> she's excited. I can tell. You've been having a pretty good day, huh? Yes, yes, sir. I'm That's what's up. Great day. That's what it is. Sun shining. It's it's nice and pretty outside. Um, mm -hmm. pollen out there. You allergic to any of that pollen? Anything like that? Uh, I wouldn't say allergic, but it did kind of. If it inhaled too much, it'd be like it won't hit the time. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Make yeah. It hard. <laughs> keep going through the day without sleeping. I I definitely have allergies. It'd be getting me, but I try to make sure I stay up on my medicine and everything like that. But yeah. you know. You got to stay on top of people or you're going to be sneezing and all that sniffing and stuff everywhere you go. Yeah. So, but yeah, a, a lot of y'all know who follow me know that Shaka C does music. Um, mostly what I hear is hip hop, Christian hip hop seem like, or inspirational hip hop. What, oh, okay. what, what would you, how would you describe your music? Like what genre, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, how would you describe it? Oh, okay. Well, um, Honestly, I get asked this often. Yeah. And I really don't have um like a genre, I guess to say. I mean, I just music is to me, music is music. Yeah. It is been it's been given, it's it's a gift and it's it's utilized to either use it or be abused. So oh, okay. you have a lot of people that can say they're gospel singers, but they abuse music. Yeah. And same thing, vice versa. So it's hollering how you use the gift. Yeah, definitely. It's definitely it's 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 like a it's like a power that you have responsibility right. with because it can be influential in a lot of different ways. People don't realize how influential music can be. Mm -hmm. um, music is power. I yeah. mean, words, because cause it's words coming. coming Absolutely. Out it, it controls. I mean, it, it really can inspire and motivate you to, um, you know, kind of really inspire you to live a certain type of life. And, mm -hmm. you know, even the way we dress, how we talk, all those different things. Yeah. So, um, but overall, you just speaking from a perspective of just being creative. Yeah. yeah. You, no, no, no limits on your creativity. Right. No, I ain't gonna put no limits on it. <laughs> Not no you. more anyway. No, no. no. Right. So yeah. you can you you pretty much can can uh go to any lane you want to and just kind of, you know, create and mm -hmm. do some things like that. Yes. So yes. um so but you have been doing music for for quite some time. Um so you was doing it and you stopped. And then you got back to it. Why? Mm -hmm. Why you think you stopped? Was you um like uninspired, um, frustrated with it? You was looking for certain results and didn't get it. Like what made you stop? Well, I stopped because one. Well, one reason was because I, um, well, the main reason was I let uh, what other people said mm -hmm. get into um get into me mm -hmm. i let what they said get into me like once again words is power mm -hmm. so i let what they said get into me and and i felt that um with these certain people being supposed to be in closer to me like you know your spouse or whatever supposed to be closer to you they supposed to um be more of a 
I think you would say like help or motivational mm-hmm. for you mm-hmm. as you are with them, you know, versus vice versa. But um, that was just not my story. So I just let that interfere trying to um, please others instead mm. of keeping my focus on where it was supposed to be. Right. Pleasing or doing what God called you to do versus just doing, not doing what people felt like. Oh, why you want to do that? You know, and they had their own negative reasons. Right. You know, you just listen to that and trying to, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I ain't, you know, so that's, it caused me to stop. And that's because um, I let other people have that power to do that. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. That happens mm-hmm. a lot. And I know I've experienced that myself. And I think that's one of the main things that, we make the mistake of doing you have these big dreams mm-hmm. and you share it with small minded people or people that's not really doing anything with their life. And that's one of the things I started looking at to how people are living their life. Like they've never, they have never stepped out on any kind of faith to do anything outside of just the normal, you know, getting up, going to work every day or whatever. Mm-hmm. They don't even do things like even travel or just go to a, a you know another city and state somewhere, you know, mm-hmm. or even out the country, whatever. So I, I think that we make that mistake a lot with um, sharing our visions and dreams, stuff that God shows us, and then we share it with the wrong people, and then they automatically talk negative about it and shoot it down while you're trying to dream. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we, we make that mistake a lot. And we also want that support from people that we've been knowing for years, family members or spouse. Mm-hmm. And then when they speak against it, then you start, like you said, you start believing that, you know. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm I'm definitely someone who knows how that is and how that feels. So what did you do to turn that around, though? Did you just kind of start blocking them out, stop being around them? You created some distance. How did you find the motivation to get back to your music? I had to, um, I had to find myself again that was, that was one thing I had to find myself again and another thing was that I had to get away from the neg- negativity okay. I had to get away from that um because it had gotten to the point it had got to so bad to the point that I was at the point of um that retaliation mode oh, you know yeah, like when yeah. you get a dog or especially put pit bull in a corner you just mm-hmm. nagging at it nagging at it nagging at it. Well, eventually that dog is not going to take so much of your neck right <laughs> it's going right. to retaliate in some type of manner so for me to um keep my peace and my sanity i had to make a choice mm-hmm. i had to make a choice and then um with doing that um there was a revival mm-hmm. okay <laughs> there was a revival so what was done and what was said during the revival, um, I let I, I let that allowed that to come in and soak in. Mm-hmm. So one thing I too I had to learn that um you can't help others be revived if you're not. Right. It right. It, it starts from the source mm-hmm. of where it's flowing from. So I had to make I just had to make a choice whether mm-hmm. you gonna live or you gonna die because that's the the powers in the tongue is the life or death that's what it is mm-hmm. just one or two so i just like i said i just had to make a choice and so when i made that choice and um after doing that i uh i, I repented mm-hmm. <laughs> i repented and 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 um asked god you know what was it that you want me to do mm-hmm. what did you want what would you have me do because um i can't our power don't work. Flesh power don't work. Right. So I was just like, you know, God, what you have me do? And I just got to a point that I just surrendered myself and I became broken. And I started to feel that want and that confidence and um, a di- sense of direction. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And um, So it's like all these years I've been having you, you know, and a lot of people don't understand that, you know, when you get off course in life, and um, you feel like God should be on the back burner. He'd be right there. Right. Waiting at the point that you left him at. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so Absolutely. then you got to pick up pieces, you know. So, I mean, it's a healing process, but it's good. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you you feel free. You feel open. You feel, um, you just feel so much, so much better. So when right. I finally made the decision, the choice to do what I need to do at all costs mm-hmm. and let um, God come in with that, then, yeah. That's when it started to flow. Yeah, so I was still nervous. Like, I'm nervous now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but that's but that's good, though, because you stepping outside of your comfort zone and you are um, doing 
something now that God is intending for you to do. And you had to make some tough decisions, mm -hmm. you know, with distancing yourself from certain people and cutting people off. But for a lot of people, though, that's not easy. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Because you get emotionally attached to people. Right. There's an emotional attachment. Um, and then you start trying to um, figure out how you're going to function outside of a dysfunction because that's mm -hmm. what you've been used to. Right. So you're used to this dysfunction. So now you're trying to figure out how you're going to function outside of it. It's kind of like, I remember my situation, I related it to like being in prison. Mm. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. then you finally get released back into the world. And now you're trying to adjust to that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or you, if you've been in the dark for a long time and then you come out and get exposed to the light, and you know how that is. Mm -hmm. You can't really see it first. Your eyes got to get adjusted. So there's a process. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely not easy, um, you know, coming out of a situation that you have allowed yourself to um, get so used to and, and it's, it's become attached to you so mm -hmm. much to the point where you literally have to, it's like cutting something off of your skin mm -hmm. and it's going to hurt. Yeah. Even though what you've been dealing with was hurting you. Mm -hmm. So did it, so did that, did that happen as quickly as you wanted it to? Did it take some months, some years, like what, mm -hmm. what did it, how long did it take for you to make that tough decision and get past that? Like, well, what was the time frame? It took over eight years. Eight years to do mm -hmm. it? Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. so that was a long, that was a bit. So I, I understand like how you feel. And I mean, you don't know how you feel, but I'm right. saying. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. Said, I, I feel like when you get so used and compatible to doing um, a certain thing or a certain way, or you get used to somebody abusing you or mm -hmm. however, whatever, you get used to that. Mm -hmm. So like you said, like being in prison, you come out and you're trying to get adjusted to the light. Mm -hmm. Well, um, this is a movie called The Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And it's uh, The Pirates of the Caribbean. One of the series, I like Pirates of the Caribbean. All okay. of them, I watch But uh, the, <laughs> anyway, one of the series is um, the guy, um, he, he wanted to rescue his dad from... Uh, I think it was Pirate Black Black Ship or something like that. Something. Yeah, yeah. And his dad told him, he said, well, um, when you die, he takes you on the ship. Mm -hmm. And when you're on the ship, after you're there, but after you're there so long dealing with him and he makes you become a slave, okay. you become a part of the ship. Mm -hmm. So they were actually molding into the ship. Mm -hmm. And about the time he came to save his dad, it was just, it was too late for his dad. Mm -hmm. It was that long that he'd been on that ship. Mm -hmm slaved mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> being enslaved he became a part of it so it mm -hmm. wasn't it was so hard for him to try to leave the ship it felt like that was his life you know being mm -hmm. con it was connected there so when it comes down to like even with you know people in mm -hmm. situations it's like like what you say you get used to when you be in there it starts to mold into you mm -hmm. but no, when it's um i just want to make sure you're close to you oh, <laughs> thank you um but when you make up your mind when you make up your mind even though it's it's hurtful staying in the in the position mm -hmm. um when you make up your mind that it's got to be a better way like right. it's got to be a better way because mm -hmm. i mean if that was the case then what was the reason for moses going down to egypt right it wasn't no reason right if they was just gonna stay there mm -hmm. we, would, we, would, we would think that but every time israel got hungry and they figured they didn't want to press to go to the next level, mm -hmm. they ended up back in Egypt. Mm -hmm. We're going back to Egypt now mm -hmm. Ooh, with mm -hmm. our bags and luggage. Mm -hmm. But then you don't realize, like, even though it might take extra work to get out of that, um, the freedom you will encounter or the promised land you will encounter is, is I mean, you will see the difference in, uh, is it worth really staying mm -hmm. like this? And, and it don't have to be so much like, um, husband, wife, there can be any relationship, people that try to attach to you or people that try to right. um, become close to you. And, and they, you know, they don't mean, you know, well, you know, right. you, like you, right. you're out, your conscious actually literally is telling you no. Yeah. No. Yeah. You're no. exactly right. And you, your body is like, yes. You know, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. And then get caught up, you know, so it, it does hurt to stay there, mm -hmm. but it will hurt you. Even worse, if you continue to stay there, it hurts to leave. I meant to say, I know yeah. it does hurt to leave, but it will hurt you even more if you stay, if you stay yeah. because you got to look at it too. After that person <laughs> drags you down or, you know, tear you apart, mm -hmm. if they do it long enough, if you let them do it long enough, mm -hmm. I mean, the end results is, is death. 
really. Absolutely. That's the end result. So did you want to stay there and do that? Or do you want right. to be free with the parakeets? I mean, I mean, <laughs> you got to make a choice. You just have to make, we have to make choices. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you made a choice to get in there. So you got to make a choice to get out. There you go. So, Like you said, it's life, it's life and death. Um, and that's, that's the same decision that I had to make too, you know, you know, um, years ago. And I don't re I don't think people realize that it's that serious. Mm -hmm. Um, it might not be necessary. Like you said, it can lead to a physical death, but it also is more so of you watching what the, the life that, what God has for you die before your eyes. Like you just mm -hmm. seeing all of that fade away. And um, I think that um, we we think that we have time. We mm -hmm. think that we have more time than we actually do have um, to get things right and make the right decision. But I feel like <clears throat> once you get, like you said, back into that corner and you realize everything that you really know you want for you and what's best for you is about to all go away, you know, you'll make that decision, make that tough decision. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's, I mean, but either way, uh, there's there's still um hope in all those situations when you, even when you do feel like you're hopeless and you're stuck mm -hmm. it's still hope hope is still there there's always an opportunity um you know for that that one moment that one breakthrough you know and that's all it take it's all mm -hmm. it take you know it's like it can happen instantly even even if it takes like you said 8 years but it but everything changed or can change in one night, you know. Yeah, I hope it don't take eight years for nobody. <laughs> <laughs> That's a long time. It's almost it, a century. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a long time. Yeah, so. you know. <laughs> oh, I God. think I think um I think people uh you know that's the thing. Like people don't wanna like they don't wanna think about the idea of going through something that long, mm -hmm. you know. But um but yeah, you know, it happens. You know what I'm saying? Like I was I, I was in a um, you know, a relationship that was really bringing me down and taking me down like that for 15 years of mm -hmm. my life. So you know yeah. what I mean. So that's it, it happens. Like I say, like you say, I, I hope nobody doesn't um have to go through that for that long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, yeah, like, oh, babes. <laughs> <laughs> but that's like you said, that's that's a decade and a half mm -hmm. that uh you know that's gone out your life, but nothing is wasted. You know, yeah. still God can still use um, everything that you went through, and um, mm -hmm. so you know, for anybody that's out there feeling like they stuck mm -hmm. in something, you know, it can change and it will change. But you yeah. gotta, you gotta want it to change. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. You, you got to want it. Like, I mean, like want it, want it. Don't yeah. sit there and be like wishing upon a genie come fall from the stars to come save you. No, yeah. you're going to have to make like an effort because mm -hmm. I know <clears throat> when I was going through my thing or whatever, I kept hearing, like, even in my sleep, I would hear, <clears throat> you going to meet me halfway? Yeah. Meet me halfway? Mm -hmm. like, you can't, like, and I think that, you know, people, especially um, believers and stuff, we sit there and we'd be like, God's going to do it for me. Ooh, yeah, he going to do it. Uh -huh. He going to bring me out. But you packed your bags. You yeah. ready to be have brought you, out? Have you have have you done your part? Yeah, yeah. You I mean, no, you know what I'm saying? Can you come in and expect God to do everything? He already then sent Jesus down here and he right. had to go through all that to get us to a point that, you know, we can be redeemed, but you have to by yeah. your faith, by the proclaiming of your faith. Where is it? Yeah, it's it's it's, it's like life is a business and God is not gonna manage it for us. We gotta do our part, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, a lot of people don't, don't realize that, you know, you pray, but you, you can't just sit and wait, you know, for something to happen. Mm -hmm. You got to get up and make some things happen for yourself. Um, so, but now you are, you are in position to move forward mm -hmm. without dealing with, you know, dealing with the things that was pulling you away from God, pulling you away from the life that you really wanted, pulling you away from peace and everything. So now you're in that space now where you have that opportunity. So you're doing some different things. You are into art, you said. You, mm -hmm. you also um, make oils and do all those kind of things yeah, on the side. <laughs> yeah. you, um, you, you, have you ever thought about turning, turning those things into a business or anything like that? Mm -hmm. Has anybody said that you should? Well, I've been, <clears throat> I've been asked um, 
I've been asked about, especially like with the natural products mm-hmm. and everything, because I really like, I think, I thank God for that because I, I haven't, and what, well, I know that you didn't ask me about that, but I was going to tell you what. Go ahead. <laughs> whatever you want to say. Go <laughs> I ahead. I got that because oh, my children, like <laughs> they would, you know, children be children. They be getting into stuff and stuff yeah. be coming, popping up on little bumps. It's like, what is that? I don't know. You know, so yeah. one time I used to be not one of the moms that took my child to the doctor for everything, but I used to take, you know, if you looking kind of funny or whatever and you got something broken out on you, yeah, I'll, I'll take you to the doctor. Come on. So I would take him to the doctor and, it, and the doctors was telling me, I don't know what that is. Right. I may have to do some testing. Mm-hmm. Not on this baby. <laughs> you okay. won't be doing no testing. <laughs> Thank you. And mm-hmm. uh, can I get my checkout papers? So we about to go. So that's what took me to, you know, just doing, um, studying, um, doing, like just studying and seeing, you know, because God put plants on this earth for a reason. <laughs> you know, you right, put herbs right. and plants and stuff for a reason. That's not meant for us to abuse neither, but it's on here for a reason. So. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what got me into um, using flowers, making infused oils, making um, things for their hair, you know, mm-hmm. so they got locks too. They, I mean, healthy mm-hmm. looking, mm-hmm. get long, you know, so that's what made me proud as a mom. That made okay. me, you know, proud. Like, I, I know I can do, I can put my hands to work because that's what, where's what it says we're supposed to do anyway. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, so, okay. So you using things from the earth to... Mm-hmm to uh for like medicine and and hair care products health products and things of that nature is what you what yes you, it's what you're doing yes sir and skin okay. and stuff so like making natural teas and stuff like that wow. so i've been people asking um why don't you open up a store or a herbal shop i'm like mm, nah who gonna run it <laughs> Jermaine, you gonna do it <laughs> that, right <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to like, do it <laughs> grow me an extra octopus arm to <laughs> run a store on top of everything else so i don't know about that maybe um but i do like if people you know when people come to me and say um do you ever have have anything for like sore throat or cold well, i can get you something i can make you something you know wow. make you something you rub it because yeah like we gotta understand like our skin is like a um my skin is a living organism yeah, itself right, so it right. breathes and it drinks and you know just like the earth dude that's right. where we came from Right, yeah. That's, that's so it makes like. sense that we we use what what we came from. Yeah, so. to, yeah, yeah. I got I mean, you. So your skin you. drinks it. It um it needs vitamins and everything else. It's like you know you would do like when people get. I'm not a planter. Well, planterist or person that not a plant like the green. Uh, yeah, thumb I know what people. you mean. I don't know. Yeah, you're right. Green thumbs. Yeah, I'm not yeah. one of those, but I <laughs> do see that the soil got little bees in the vitamins stuff for the soil for the seed, so it can right, grow. Right. It's the same thing with our skin, basically. So if you can't use it on your hair but you can use it on your body Mm -hmm. something wrong with that product if you can use it on your face but not your hair uh, your face is on your head that's connected to your body so you can't use neither one of them it's separate like yeah something ain't right about the product (laughs) you know what thing about put before you put that on so how far how far does this go like um like do you um you do that with food too like you, you don't do you eat or don't eat certain foods like what what like when it comes down to food do you stay away from certain things um i stay away from well this is me in particular i ain't saying like that this is just something right because you know just... food stuff had a lot of chemicals mm-hmm. and all that stuff like that so i figured you probably up on that too yeah well i know i stay away from like red meat okay red meats and stuff um i eat a lot of fish um i stay kind of low on the chicken i eat chicken every now and again i mean but in lamb i like lamb oh where i, I see like that's lamb. the thing I have never had lamb chops. I've been yes. wanting to try lamb chops. Did you see lamb chops? <laughs> the thing must... must be good. <laughs> hey, you, you said there was some meaning <laughs> behind it. Some lamb chops. <laughs> yes. Like, if you they like look steak, good, though. Yeah, they good. If yeah. you get somebody, now Mediterranean people, now cook some lamb chops. Okay. And um, Greek, uh, I guess, you know, yeah. Greek and, uh, what is it, the Arab, they know how to cook. It's, the, it's a way that they actually kill the animal okay to consider it as a um i guess an honorable sacrifice yeah you yeah. know it worth eating or whatever but right. how they cook it and like they they spice it with like the cumin seeds right and right the, uh i don't think they even use cilantro or they use that saffron yeah yes you don't even taste no game 
Oh, you don't taste like if you eat goat, you had, had goat. Nah, I hadn't had no goat. Oh, okay, I'm about to say you eat that curry goat, you know the difference. Because the curry goat tastes like it just came off the farm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so but, yeah. So um, so goat is, I mean, okay, you got you got lamb chops. So what? How how do you eat goat? Like what? Like it's just like just chops of meat. Like how do you eat goat? Yeah, you can eat it chunks of meat. <laughs> what? Like, Does it, mm -hmm. You've made it before. I have not. I have tried it. Where you where you where you had goat at? Because it ain't nowhere around here. <laughs> yeah, the I'll, Jamaican restaurant got it. I'm, I'm trying to think what they call around it. Around here? Right there for her long. Oh, it's okay. Called, I forgot what it's called. Not Caribbean Hood. It's another one. It's one right off her long. They made um curry goat, but I I I I can't feel curry goat. Like uh -huh. it just don't go well with me. So but people that I know people that like it. They say they like it. So that's okay. So that's like Jamaican. Jamaican. Okay, you know what? That is right. Thank I've heard. I've heard. I've heard that. Okay. So I, you know, I, this is a lot of stuff I hasn't, I haven't tried, but I've been wanting to try some, get into some new stuff. Like you say, you know, most cases it's chicken. I, I stopped eating pork though. Mm -hmm. I don't eat pork no more. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just figured you probably since you was into all the other stuff or whatever, maybe you look at, you know, watch what you eat and stuff like that too. Yeah, so um, vegetables and fruit and stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he eat that. But so far as meat, I kind of like kind of right. leaned away from. I guess, mm -hmm. just, I guess, the older you get, just like his appetite change. Right. But I wasn't no big eater with meat anyway. But I eat a lot of um, like rice. Rice, you get you like okay? Rice. Yeah, I mean, I like rice and with the uh, curry and the I put like almond nuts and cashews in my rice. Wait, okay, so that's like an African thing. I don't know, but yeah. my mom be like, "Why you eat like that?" I'm like, it's good yeah, to me. yeah, because uh, I, I know someone um, um, that's African. She's really into she. She's I've literally seen her eat nuts, peanuts, and mm -hmm. rice together. So yeah, that's it's like an good. African thing. Yes. I don't know. No. I don't think I want to try no rice and nuts. No. <laughs> <laughs> but it's feeling like, for you know, you'd be like, fool. So you'd be like, oh, okay. I bet. I bet it is feeling because you can peanuts and rice. <laughs> yeah, nuts and rice. So that's protein and rice. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Beans and rice. It's like the same thing. Beans and rice and um, nuts and rice is like the same combination. No, nah, I wouldn't be eating no nuts and beans. <laughs> <laughs> Not together. I don't know about that, but the rice by itself and the, you know, some cranberries or dry berries or something like that on the side. But yeah. Okay. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know about nuts and beans and nuts. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh -huh. so um, it, you you don't have any is any of your any of your music on the streaming platforms like Spotify and Apple Podcast? I think you know what I think I accidentally did you this because I didn't did know it. right because <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. I'm like my daughter, like mom, you must be old, son. You don't know how to do these computer. So I'm like, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out what to do. She was like, mom, and then a couple of weeks later, she was like, mom, I found your song on um. I think she says Spotify. Oh, okay. And it's an old song. It's some old. I did it last year. That's why I was trying to do something. Do some new stuff. Okay. I got way new stuff now. Mm -hmm. Now, so it's like the sound is a little different. It sounds different to me, but. Right. Right. Okay. So, so well, either way, y'all could be able to catch her um, in the month of April on Saturdays for my spotlight segment on Phrase 100.9. Um, yeah, you can catch her on there uh, in the meantime. But um, do you want to give out your social media <laughs> so people can connect with you? <laughs> oh, well, for right now, I got my Instagram up. So I finally did that. And okay. Then, yeah, Shaka C underscore all day. Okay. And then um, I'm still working on whole YouTube things. So I'm trying to figure right. out what, what I did with that. Oh, I don't it. know what I did. <laughs> you can get it. Yes, sir. So, so okay. So, so check out on IG, um, Shaka C all day. Or just Shaka all day. It's Shaka C underscore all day. Shaka C underscore all day. Okay. So check her out on IG and um and again check her out on um Gospel Music Spotlight Saturdays for the month of April. Um you'll be able to catch the uh the air times when I post a flyer and when she posts a flyer. Yes. <laughs> all Thank right. You. Thank you. Well, yeah, <laughs> for sure, for sure. Well, it was really, really it, it, I, I wanna say enlightening 
because you shared a lot of stuff that I ain't know nothing about. Uh -oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> Especially with the skincare, and, the, and I'm gonna gotta go somewhere and get me some of them, some of that goat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> get some goat. <laughs> gotta get me some goat. Oh lord. But other than that, though, I enjoyed you. Thank you for coming. Yeah, likewise. Well, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You're such a bright light. But um, people, again, make sure y'all check her out on Gospel Music Spotlight Saturdays on Praise 100.9 for the month of April. Um, and uh, yeah, we're gonna have to have a back to get an update. That's cool with you. That's cool. Yes, what's up? That's what's up. <laughs> but thank y'all for listening and watching the Mr. Dark Eye podcast. We will be continuing to motivate you to trust God and live your dreams. So always come back to get this motivation. Yes. You, heard? you heard? All right, we out. <laughs> what it is, great people. The home of motivation. To trust God and live your dreams.